Good day. Welcome to uh, today's live event with uh, myself, Scott Samuel, here with Ruby and my friend and colleague, uh, Chef Jackie Pfeiffer, I'm broadcasting out of Chicago. Today is part three of Holiday Meals, and we're going to discuss uh, amazing desserts. We're going to take a few recipes from the three courses that we have developed with the French Pastry School. We have Introduction to Pastry Arts, uh, Bread Baking Arts, and our latest one, cake, uh, cake Baking and Decorating, that we just launched last week. So we're taking some uh, recipes from there and then kind of improvising them. And Chef Jackie's gonna show you how to take those techniques and apply them to holiday favorites. So today during the live event, if you haven't been here before, there's a place to enter questions on the right-hand side and these will queue up. And after our presentation, we'll answer these questions and help you get through some of your, uh, your needs. So the first, uh, I'd like to introduce Chef Jackie Pfeiffer. Um, from the French Pastry School. Um, he and I had worked together for the last year and a half developing the trilogy of courses, online courses, and taking his information, his technique, his 30 years of experience and trying to replicate it online. Um, and today, holiday dessert. So welcome, Chef Jackie. Thank you very much and uh, very happy to be here and to uh, to discuss those, those ideas. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, for the past year and a half, we've been working together on uh, putting those three courses together and uh, and now, as you call it, the trilogy, um, they are out there. Uh, they're focusing on pastry, on bread making and on cake decorating. So i um, uh, very excited to uh, share some uh, fun ideas for the for the holidays. Um, the, the three courses <clears throat> contain uh, fundamental recipes, uh, and those recipes can be made as is, and just like a baguette can just be a baguette, and uh, but it can be also extended to other recipes. Uh, for instance, a pastry cream can be extended uh, into something called uh, a mousseline, where you incorporate butter or buttercream to the pastry cream. Now it makes a uh, a new recipe and you're going to ask me uh, chef scott why would i do that is well sometimes for some fillings uh depending on what you are making but let's say if you're making a napoleon which is uh uh layers of baked puff pastry with uh, uh pastry cream if that pastry cream contains a little bit of butter it will be a more stable and b it will not get the puff pastry so soggy okay so, but today is we, we're here to talk about extending those fundamental recipes and making something festive, something for the holidays. Uh, 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 and, and I have some tricks of the trades, uh, things that I've learned uh, over the last uh, 45 years, not 30 years, like you said, Chef Scott, 45 years of experience, but that's okay. Uh, and... Uh, and it's all about uh, getting people to uh, think out of the box when they have a fundamental recipe. And people should be able to ask themselves, what else can I do with this? How can I, how can I change it to something else? But of course, as any true pastry chef and bakers, we are control freaks. Everything has to be uh, measured, calculated. It cannot just be just thrown together and hope that everything is going to go well. So uh, uh, this is what we are going to discuss uh, during this event, uh, fun ideas. And this is just what, what uh, uh, we uh, 
could uh, mention during this event, but there's so many more things uh, that we can make out of the recipes in all of the three programs. So, Chef Scott, if you don't mind, we can start with the third recipe. Yeah, just a, a little bit of a heads up for uh, the people watching. Uh, we're going to go through a vanilla ice cream, and this is something I've known about for years. And it's, well, I like to think of it, as you've said, as the base recipe and then how to improvise it. So we're going to incorporate a couple of uh, ingredients in the vanilla ice cream to make it holiday and uh, give the, um, the specific measurements to add to our recipe. We're also going to go through uh, making a, a classic pot of choux with a pastry cream and what that looks like. Uh, we're going to talk about a big a baguette and turn a baguette into a, a wreath in addition to working with brioche. And then uh, the final will be uh, working with sponge cake and a buttercream and a ganache to make a bouche de Noël that I think Chef has made to show us at the end. So that's kind of the order of events. And let's start with the vanilla ice cream, Chef. Yes. So the vanilla ice cream can be infused in so many different ways. And yesterday you and I were talking about this. And uh, the typical way to infuse an, an ice cream is to uh, ice cream is, is made of mainly milk. Uh, the, the bulk of the ingredients is milk, and milk contains a tremendous amount of water. And uh, this water can then be infused with, let's say, crushed coffee beans, teas, spices, uh, vanilla, herbs, you name it, okay? But what I want to show you today is, is to even uh, take it to the next level, is to infuse the milk with... Uh, items that are already baked. So what I have here for you, and uh, Jeff, if you want to um, um, focus on this, I took some pumpkin and I cook the pumpkin. At first, I, I peeled it and I, uh, I chopped it in cubes, okay? And uh, some of the cubes, I um, candied them in simple syrup, okay? for about an hour until they become translucent. So not just, this is just cubed fresh pumpkin uh, that is cooked in a simple syrup. And then after that, I have uh, the same cubes that have been actually cooked in a very, uh, very low oven. We're talking about 175 to 200 Fahrenheit. We're talking about drying, okay? And, and so what this is going to do, this is going to be like croutons. <laughs> and uh, what we are going to do with those, with this one, the dried one, we're going, whenever we're going to cook our ice cream mix, we're going to throw those dried out cubes of pumpkin in the hot milk. Then we're going to cool down this mixture uh, and let it rest overnight in a refrigerator. Okay. And the next day, we are going to, uh, with a blender or uh, an immersion blender, uh, we're going to blend the entire thing. So we're going to force the, those uh, pumpkin uh, pieces that are now softened by the milk. We're going to force them to be completely liquefied. Then we strain this mixture and we churn it in, in the ice cream machine. And then when it comes out, what we're going to do, we're going to incorporate those candied uh, chunks of, of pumpkin. So not only the pumpkin ice cream is going to taste like pumpkin, pumpkin, but it also will have chunks of pumpkin, okay? Another idea is to do, I did the same thing with gingerbread. So I took the gingerbread um, cake uh, from the bread course, okay? And uh, I, uh, after baking the gingerbread cake, I um, cut those little croutons that are dried in the oven again. Same technique. You want to dry things in the oven so there's no more water in those croutons, okay? Because if you, if you just put fresh uh, gingerbread cake in the ice cream mix, it will still contain water. And that water, if, it's, if there's too much of it, it will turn into ice and then make this ice cream icy, okay? So the idea is always to dry out the, the cake. And then same thing, I put those dried out croutons in the hot milk and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight until they completely dissolve, blend it, 
and strain it and churn this ice cream. And then if you if you feel frisky, uh, Chef Scott, and I know you do during the holidays, you can always fold in more pieces of uh, uh, gingerbread, but this time not dried out, fresh ginger baked gingerbread, okay? So those are a couple ideas for the holidays. Uh, I know you have some videos you wanna show, right? Let's uh let's roll that ice cream video because you kind of talked to that pretty quickly, and I do want to note for everybody on the, the call that there is a, a link to all these recipes, uh, and all the other um, events that we're doing for this holiday series. So, the first question on the link you can click that to get this recipe. So the vanilla ice cream recipe res uh, we'll show you the video for the technique, but basically what uh, Chef Jackie went through is you're adding I think it's 125 grams of either the pumpkin or the gingerbread to the existing recipe that we're providing. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And just one, 125 compared to the whole, the entire weight of the ingredients. Okay, Patrick, let's roll that. Okay, so the vanilla ice cream. Tell me about the 125 grams to the entire weight. So if I look at the recipe, where do I measure the 125 grams? If, if the recipe is, uh, if the total of the recipe is a thousand grams, you add you you measure you add 150 grams of uh, all dried out pumpkin or dried out uh, gingerbread croutons. Okay. Excellent. And that's that's my ratio, but you can you could even put a little bit more if you want to. The problem if you put too much, then it gets really dry, and uh, and and the ice cream will be um will be too uh, greedy, grainy, but in a bad way, you know. So what about uh, you know this is what I've done with ice creams is infusing it like tea. So let's say the gingerbread has the allspice and the clove and the cinnamon, and I could actually yes. add some extra spices when I scald yes. the milk and infuse that extra flavor, correct? Yes, absolutely, you can do that. And uh, I, I, uh, I'm I, glad you said that because uh, the pumpkin itself, pumpkin itself doesn't really have a huge flavor, okay? Right. It's by adding the spices to the ice cream mix that you can enhance this. And um, I did add some, um, some uh, uh, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and so on. To the to the pumpkin ice cream, I did not have to do that for the gingerbread um, uh, cake ice cream because it's already in the recipe. And while I have you here, I uh, I made this little presentation. I hope you can see it. I took a, a small pumpkin, of course, emptied it, and uh, I um, I put the ice cream in there, and uh, you can see some croutons. So this is a, a great way to, uh, you can make this way in advance. I mean, I made that yesterday. It's been sitting in the freezer. And, and so you could, you could do that for a party at home. And um, um, works really well. Uh, and it's very, very flavorful. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Thank you. Made so, it myself. Yeah. <laughs> So to be clear with uh, everyone on the call, you're taking the base recipe, adding the 125 grams of the pumpkin, infusing, and then you'll strain it out. Uh, the amount of spices are not really listed, so kind of to your liking for pumpkin spice yes. or gingerbread. Yes. All right. Yes, but uh, be very careful with spices because um, too much, too much of, uh, of it will just overpower uh, the flavor, like and, and especially cloves. Cloves and nutmeg are very, very uh, strong spices. So um, at the end of the day, we're, we're trying to make the flavor of the pumpkin mix with the spices mm -hmm. to come out. If you put too much cloves, it, it's just it's just too much, and then you you just you just don't taste anything anymore. Right, totally true. So yeah. I just have to throw in one more thing. I like to use like woody herbs during the, the season and throw some bay leaf in there, and some yeah. rosemary, and maybe even a little bit of thyme to actually accent the, the flavor of the holiday. So let's you move on to the, the next one. We're gonna be talking about the choquette with yes. the pastry cream, what we call those cream puffs in America. Well, in French, they're not called choquette, uh, but that's your French lesson of the day. 
it's shuket. Okay. Shu, pata shu is the is the French term for uh, shoe paste, and then shuket is a small is a small cream puff, and it's just a cute it's just a cute term for a uh, for a cre cream uh, puff. You know the French they all, they always like to give names cute names to things, right? Yep. All right, so let's take a look at this and uh, the pastry cream, which is another uh, base recipe that I've known for years that we're going to infuse in this case with vanilla, correct? Okay, so we took the voiceover off the videos just to kind of uh, accentuate the technique and what we're talking about and what it's going to look like. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the pastry cream, what's important here, um, the thickening properties instead of you know flour or cornstarch, which one do you prefer? Well, uh, you can use cornstarch or uh, some people use a cake flour or a mix. Uh, on, uh, using only cake flour would make uh, the pastry cream uh, rubbery because of the gluten in the in the cake flour. You can use only cornstarch, but uh, some people like two thirds of cornstarch and one third of cake flour. Um, either or, okay, that works really well. But as as uh, we saw the video, the video in the video we see that this pastry cream is infused with vanilla. But we could infuse it with herbs. Uh, I know you're going to say rosemary, but we're not going to do that this time. Not, not rosemary on everything, Chef Scott. And um, spices. Uh, you can definitely add spices to that and uh, make uh, cinnamon uh, pastry cream or, uh, or uh, cinnamon nutmeg and so on. Uh, that works really, really well for this, uh, for this little project that we're going to show. Oh yeah. Uh, so you tell me. You tell me how we say that. All right. So let's go to the video. I want to show you what uh, can be made with the the, the cream puffs. Okay. All right. So that's a, a beautiful croquembouche. How often do you make one of those, Chef? That's not how you say it. You know, no. it's, um, you say croquembouche. Okay, croque is to bite, and embouche means in the mouth. Okay, so usually croquembouche uh, are is actually the the typical wedding cake uh, people order back in, back in France. Um, but I thought that this. This would be a great way for our students who, who took the pastry course uh, and who know how to make uh, pastry cream and pata shoe, uh, shoe paste uh, to assemble those puffs, fill them, of course, and then assemble them with a little bit of caramel. They know how to make caramel from uh, the, the caramel candy uh, uh, lesson. And so assembling those, first, usually we, we glaze the, each puff with a little bit of caramel and they can be as is with just uh, the the crunchy what will become the crunchy caramel or you can dip them in some of of uh, rock sugar you can even uh, if you want you can even uh, color the sugar put a little bit of green or red coloring or gold coloring and 
and dip it in there. And then after that, it's just assembling them into a small tower. I, th I think it can be a very, very nice and festive uh, dessert, uh, or even just a, a small piece to highlight a, a buffet uh, for the holidays. Yeah, I've never made one of those, but it seems to be kind of uh, tricky with the temperature, having the caramel at the right temperature when you dip it and set it and hold so that it cools yes. enough to build your tower, correct? Yeah, maybe in, in a few years, you know, you'll be able to make those, but you're not you're not there yet, right, Chef Scott? You, oh, I think I'm there. I'll be doing it this season. Thanks for your uh, I don't here. know. Maybe two, three years. I see. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We've uh, pulled a couple of uh, recipes from the Bread Baking Arts course, uh, the French baguette recipe and the brioche yes. recipe. So tell us, yes. uh, Chef, what you've uh, done with these to kind of take them into a, a holiday theme. <laughs> So I asked my uh, bread baker, uh, Chef, Chef Otto, to, uh, to make a wreath, okay? And this is, a, this is a, a French baguette, okay? And uh, it's, it's exactly like a, like a baguette recipe, but he put pieces. He loves to eat meat, so this is pieces of salami. But you can put, uh, you can put cranberries, you can put whatever you want in there, right? Uh, cranberries would actually look very good um, because of the color. And uh, the baguette is just shaped in, in uh, first lengthwise, just like uh, when you make a baguette. But then after that, you bring it together and with a little bit of water, you force it to stick uh, uh, together. <clears throat> and then after that, you let it proof a little bit. And just before you bake it with a scissor, you just cut the... The, the sides of it just to make those pointy edges. So this, again, this is an idea that can be, you can make this with pretty much any bread. And uh, this this was supposed to be brioche, but it's not brioche, uh, but it, it doesn't matter. It, it can it can be made with any kind of dough. Can, so if you look at, at the back of it, it's just uh, uh, two, four, six, seven pieces of round uh, brioche like uh, rolls that are just uh, put together uh, with a little egg wash, they can stick together. And then you just take one more piece of, of brioche that you just roll out flat, a disc that you just stick on there. <clears throat> and during the baking, it that flat piece actually uh, rises up and, and makes it look like a crown, okay? And uh, if you want to make those, uh, they can be great for um, for a buffet, for a, a holiday buffet. But you could even like bake them uh, forever in the oven at a very low temperature, like around 250 degrees, until they, they are completely dry and hard like a rock. And then you can actually use them to hang them in front of your door if you want to. Okay? Well, that's beautiful. I have to ask a little bit about the disc on the top. It seems uh, that wasn't very clear because you wouldn't, it'd be a round disc, like a donut shape yes. that you put on top? Well, it's it's a, it's a round ball, uh, a roll of dough that you flatten with your hand and then you roll it out, just kind of like a pizza. Okay. And then you stick it, you stick it on those seven rounds of dough and then you proof it like this, okay? Yeah, that's beautiful. No problem. All right, let's move on to uh, the masterpiece here that I look forward to seeing what you built here. But you're going to talk about sponge cake, uh, buttercream, Swiss buttercream, and uh, ganache. And then maybe you can tell us a little bit about the different types of buttercreams while yeah. you're going through uh, this. Just want to make sure we didn't have any videos for uh, baguettes and brioche, or did we miss that? Or um, Yeah, let's. Uh, we, we have a video for both. Um, Patrick, okay. let's move on. Uh, those two videos, please.
Okay, so those are just snippets of uh, the many videos that are within the bread baking course. Uh, the baguette, which we just took the base recipe and turned into a wreath, and the brioche, which I think you said you used a different bread for that other um, wreath, yeah, correct? Yeah, but you can do it with brioche, and it's not a problem. Huh? Okay, so let's move on to a few recipes from uh, the cake baking and decorating course, starting with the sponge cake, which will be the first unit that discusses how to make a, a classic sponge cake. I think there's a cold process one and a hot process one. You're working with a cold process one on this one? Uh, actually, none, none of those two. Uh, uh, I mean, you can you can make this uh, uh, any any way you want to. Uh, uh, a cold process, process sponge is pretty much you put the eggs and the sugar in the mixer and you whip it until it's foamy. And then after that, you fold in the flour and then a melted butter. That's the cold process. And uh, you can spread this into uh, a sheet tray, like I did. And then um, the hot process is the same idea, but we warm up the eggs and the sugar uh, over a, a double boiler. And the reason why we do that is that we, we warm it enough that the eggs start to coagulate slightly and it's going to make that form more stable. Okay, that's the big difference between both. And but both of them work. You don't have you don't have to worry about that. And we have a third cake uh, recipe, which is uh, uh, it's called American uh, sponge, and it, it's pretty much it contains milk, and uh, it's a uh, it's a sponge that that I, I love it because it's really uh, fail proof. And uh, it, it's it's a completely different uh, way to um, to mix it. You put actually first the dry ingredients in the mixer, and then you add the soft butter, and then you put your your milk and eggs. So it's completely unconventional, but it works really well. And uh, and it's it's the cake that we're using for many projects, including the capstone project, which is the, the sculpted cake. So. That's for the sponge part. And then after that, for the filling, uh, we're showing uh, buttercream, which is a, a, a filling that is uh, often used for uh, those kind of yule logs because um, it's very stable. And then or a ganache. Okay, I use the ganache here. Again, very stable filling. Because the problem is if you use a, a chocolate mousse or something like this, uh, very light, it's difficult to roll that... Um, that jelly roll uh, sponge and uh, and that that your log would not be as stable okay so if you if you want you can uh, show we have a few videos i believe to show and then um and then i can show you the finished product and and what it looks like Great. So there was three videos there. The first one was the, the sponge cake. Uh, the second one being the Swiss buttercream. And the last one was the ganache. Three components to what you're putting together as a Bush Noel. And I know we have a couple questions coming in from students about this. So um, let's let's see your final presentation, Chef. Yes. So the final presentation is right here. I Here in the front, uh, there is, uh, you, uh, I'm removing this, so you, this is just a piece of chocolate. So you can see the way it was rolled and usually we cover it. Uh, so it looks good and also um, uh, it does not dry out, okay? Uh, and then here, uh, the decoration is uh, shards of chocolate. 
it's just chocolate that uh, we uh, spread on uh, on parchment paper, and then uh, just by letting it sit in the refrigerator, the chocolate will will buckle up. Okay, and then I made those fun little uh, decorations right here. That uh, it's just a blob. That's very technical, Chef Scott. A blob of chocolate that I piped on a small square of parchment paper. And with a toothpick, I just pulled the edges, yeah? And then, uh, and then I just rested this on a rolling pin, okay? Uh, and then here, the little red guys that you see are mini, mini truffles that come from the, um, the pastry course also. So they're really, really tiny little, little truffles that uh, once they are rolled in chocolate, they can be rolled in like red glitter or like fruit powder, okay? And uh, Chef Scott, you're gonna ask me what is this green color, right? So that's a great question you just asked. Uh, well, it's it's a luster dust that we are um, putting on. A luster dust is something that is used to uh, to enhance uh, gum paste flowers. So you can use uh, a regular brush and just Put this luster dust contains like a, a luster, like like the name says, and then because this originally is dark chocolate, right? And so I, I just have this regular brush, but I really thank you, Chef Scott, for giving me your your private um, makeup brush. You know, I'll I'll send it back to you after the after the event. You know, it's very useful. Thank you. So uh, and uh, Jeff, Jeff, uh, our videographer. Uh, I skimmed to get a sponge. I uh, remember it had an extra sponge. So this is the sponge that we use for the, um, to make the roll. It's very, very simple. And uh, the key for this is to put 600 grams of sponge mixture for a half sheet pan, 600 grams, okay? Because if you, uh, if you put too much sponge, more than 600 grams, uh, the sponge will be too thick and it will be impossible to roll, okay? I have a lot of questions and I'm sure that the, the students do. Uh, I just wanna go back to that leaf that you made with the, the chocolate and the toothpicks. And specifically, you said you made it, then you put it on a rolling pin. So did you make it on a, some wax paper and then low, lay the wax paper yeah. over the rolling pin? Yeah, so the you pipe, melted chocolate on a piece uh, a square piece of parchment paper okay. yeah or wax paper and uh mm -hmm. and then with a toothpick you just pull away the edges so it creates those spikes yeah and then you take that square of paper and you just let it rest on a rolling pin okay and okay. It, that will give it a curved shape and once the chocolate is set then there comes the makeup brush then yep. you just dust it with the luster dust. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious about the, the parchment paper or wax paper. Parchment paper works best. So a lot of little it, different. Either or, either or, you know. A lot of little details going into this uh, beautiful uh, holiday dessert. Um, let's let's go into the questions here because I think uh, the first question is really relevant to what you've made here in terms of uh, how to make it happen right. So this first question is from uh, Catherine. And I made a bush de Noel once, like 40 years ago. The cake stuck to the powdered sugar coated towel. When I unrolled it, the cake broke into a million pieces. I served it as a trifle or trifle. Um, but how can you ensure the warm cake won't be part become part of the towel? So specifically, when you're making the sponge cake on a sheet pan, I assume it's going on parchment paper, and you might not be using the towel method. Can you elaborate? Yes, absolutely. Um... I anticipated that question. That's why I asked Chef, uh, Jeff to uh, to get the sponge cake. Uh, so yes, uh, this is baked on parchment paper, as 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 you can see. And really, the key, actually, there's two keys. I'm so glad uh, this question uh, was asked. The key is to use not more than 600 gram of sponge mix. Okay, spread it evenly. And then you bake it in a very hot oven. We're talking about 300, um, 385, 390 Fahrenheit, okay? So 
why why would we bake something so hot right because it's so thin uh, it's exactly because of that it's because we we want to bake this cake so quickly it takes about seven minutes of baking so quickly that uh, uh, the water in the cake uh, didn't have a chance to uh, evaporate right for instance if you if you let's say afraid of of baking a sponge this this high you bake it at 325 let's say uh, that sponge will take 18 minutes to bake let's say and guess what in 18 minutes a lot of water can evaporate from this mix right and this is a this is now a, a jelly roll sponge that will most probably break apart whenever you want to roll it okay so bake it fast uh three 285 390 seven minutes about seven eight minutes depends on the oven and then another trick i'm full of tricks today uh one uh, what i do i let the sponge cool when it comes out of the oven but not completely and then i cover it with plastic and i put it overnight in the refrigerator okay refrigerators are, are very uh humid actually it's done on purpose so your your uh, ingredients do not uh, dry out <clears throat> and even if let's say you overbaked your sponge a little bit and it's a little bit hard if you let that sponge sit overnight in a refrigerator uh covered with plastic wrap uh, the next day it will be soft again okay so that's a 50 dollar trick right there and it's free of charge yeah well, I think that answers your question, Catherine. First of all, um, same sponge recipe, uh, higher heat to keep the moisture in, let it cool, but it doesn't sound like you're rolling it that evening. Uh, you're going to cover it in plastic wrap and let it cool in the refrigerator. So the next day it's malleable and there's still enough moisture for you to pull it off the, the parchment paper and roll it, right? Absolutely. Just wanted to clarify that. Okay, let's go to the next question, um, Chef. This is from Sherry. Uh, nice to meet you, Chef. I'm very excited to hear and see how you make these recipes. I've always wanted to make a Bush Tone Noel. I have celiacs and dairy allergies. How could I make this to accompany my allergies? So you love these questions, Chef. Um, how would you make the, the sponge without any gluten and the buttercream without any dairy? Yeah, well, the buttercream without dairy, that's, a, that's easy. Um... Uh, you can just use, uh, my favorite is usually, um, um, uh, what are we making, buttercream, you said? You know, kind of keeping the dairy oh, and uh, the gluten out of this uh, recipe. Well, yeah, if you, if you want to make a ganache, uh, my favorite is or almond milk, almond milk and or oat milk. I really like oat milk. Uh, it has a nice taste. And, um, and then uh there's butter in the ganache you can just put vegan butter so that should be easy and then for the um, for the sponge you would have to find uh would have to find a sponge a recipe uh, that um that works well i uh, i don't i don't have right one right now but uh, yeah. but i'm sure we can we can come up with something and uh, once uh once you solve those things those two things then, uh, then you should be ready to go. Um, like I said, the, the sponge, I, I don't have one yeah. uh, right now. Well, I will uh, consult with Chef Fran, Fran, who has a uh, essential vegan dessert yes. uh, course with Ruby, and I know she'll have something if she was on the call, she uh, might I'm, be a I'm, answering the I'm question sure. right now. I'm sure Chef Fran uh, has uh, sponge cake recipes, uh, uh, hopefully jelly roll recipes uh, for uh, for that and um that would be a great uh, place to start with uh, the, the the vegan dessert uh, course okay excellent thanks sherry uh, next question is coming from heather um hello chefs i'll be making a cake for thanksgiving and would love to hear your time saving tips do you have any suggestions on how to freeze cakes and buttercream decorations to speed up assembly time so this brings so, us right to our cake course <laughs> yes the sponge you can make it today if you want <laughs> the sponge i mean it depends what kind of cake you're making but this this um roll uh so i made the sponge cake two days ago 
and I filled it uh, with the ganache and rolled it uh, yesterday. And I put it in the refrigerator only because we are we are showing it off today. But I could have put it in the freezer and uh, for weeks. So so uh, a cake like this could be made today for Thanksgiving. And this is what usually what I do when I do a cake for uh, the holidays. I, I make something that I can freeze and then this way during the holidays I can enjoy myself. I'm not like uh, slaving on the stove um, while everybody else is, uh, is celebrating, right? So sponge cakes can be made in advance. They can be filled in advance uh, like, we, like we do in production, in pastry production. Uh, uh, it's, there's no absolutely no problem of freezing a cake that is filled with mousse or buttercream or ganache. Have it, have it ready. You could even completely have it completely decorated and have it sitting in the freezer. Then to defrost it, the best is to, what I like is to take it from the freezer and transfer it in the refrigerator the day before the event. This way the, the cake can defrost slowly and will not be built with, uh, with con uh, covered with con condensation because condensation happens when you take something out of the freezer to room temperature. That's, that's the mistake. So go from the freezer to the refrigerator and then you'll have no, no condensation. Excellent. Thanks, Chef. I hope that answers your question, Heather. Uh, it really depends on what type you type of cake you make, but it seems as though yes. the sponge and the, but they all can be frozen. the fillings, it can all be frozen as a whole product. All right, next chef is coming from Leslie. Um, do you ever recommend using lard instead of butter in desserts? I don't because, because and, and uh, lard was used uh, many, many years ago, right? Decades ago because or because you were living on a farm and you had all this lard, or uh, because of a shortage of butter, uh, because of wars and depressions and God knows what. But uh, the problem with this is uh, uh, it has a, a, a taste, it has a flavor, right? It's an animal product that has a very strong flavor. And uh, I can see lard being used in a, in, a, in a chicken pot pie, that makes a lot of sense, but putting lard Putting lard in a sponge cake or in a, in a pound cake, to me, uh, 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 does does not match. But that's just my opinion. You know, uh, technically the cake will come out, okay, because it's fat and it's hundred percent fat. That means there's no water in it. So it's uh, and and to complete this um this answer is I would rather have the students use lard than shortening. Because shortening is, I think it's one molecule away from plastic, something like that. It's really a man-made product that should not be incorporated in food. And I always tell my students uh, who are horrified because they have their recipes from their grandma or old books. And I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some shortening, put it on a piece of bread, and then you eat it in front of me. They're like, oh, no, absolutely not. I said, well then it should not be in a cake, you know? Uh, so long answer to a short question, but I hope it will, uh, it will uh, uh, clarify the, the situation with lard. Yeah, that makes sense. I've used lard in uh, the savory applications, but not in the sweet applications. And uh, I did try my old great grandmother's uh, pie recipe that had half Crisco and half butter. And uh, that's the last time I've used Crisco. It didn't have the same flavor, texture, and all that. So let's move on to the question. Uh, this is coming from Kate. Uh, is it relatively easy changing recipes to use ingredients such as banana, pumpkin, persimmon? Uh, what would we want to think about uh, to do these changes? So you presented pumpkin, which you did a little bit of a drying out to. You presented the, the gingerbread cake. Um, what if I wanted to do persimmon or banana? What would I do to think? You know, same measurement, 125 grams. Would I do anything specific to those ingredients? Yes, and I love this question because um, because uh, uh, I wanted to mention that too. Uh, our, our idea that we're presenting right now for this event is about holidays. But yes, absolutely, you can use 
pretty much any anything uh, uh, persimmon is perfectly fine, and you dry it out. And and uh, the 150 gram per 1,000 gram of uh, of mix is just a start, right? It's a start. That means some some things are more flavorful than others, and you don't need to put as much. Yeah. Uh, and also yesterday, Chef Scott, you and I talked about. The adding a baked component like the the gingerbread cake, throwing pieces of of old not old but dried out gingerbread cakes uh, in an ice cream mix is something you can do with a chocolate chip cookie, uh, brownies, you name it. Uh, you can uh, you can throw those things in an ice cream mix, and now you have it. You're making brownie ice cream, and it will have the taste of baked brownies or baked chocolate chip, okay? So the answer, again, a long answer to a, sh to a short question. Yes, you can actually use uh, uh, persimmon. Banana, I would dry it out too. Uh, uh, that works very well. Uh, again, we're drying out things uh, because we don't want to uh, put fresh banana in my ice cream because uh, banana contains about 75% water. And now I'm adding a lot of a lot more water that I should in my ice cream mix, and it might get icy. Okay, so drying out those vegetables or those fruit are, are a great way to uh, enhance an ice cream, uh, but we're not adding water. Okay. Thanks, Chef. Uh, Kate, you gave me a great idea with persimmon. Um, I haven't made uh, the Japanese tried dry persimmon for a while, but I think I want to make that make a persimmon puree and then dice the dried persimmon and fold that into it. Just getting creative yeah. here. Uh, so next uh, question is not a question. It comes from Janelle. Janelle is taking uh, some of our courses. Thank you for these terrific live events. And I enjoyed the Intro to Pastry Arts course. I enjoyed so I learned so much. Last week, I started the Cake, Bacon, and Decorating Arts course and loved the first five modules I've done thus far. Happy Thanksgiving. So thanks, Janelle, for the compliments. Um, it is a- Thank you. It is a, a passion of ours to put these together. Um, next question is from Natalie. Uh, bonjour, uh, the Espen, Istanbul chef. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Is it possible to make vegan eclairs? Sure. Yeah, it's possible. You uh, you um, you would have to use a vegan uh, ice, a vegan um, uh, eclair mix, and I think I do have a recipe. I have to look for it. Uh, uh, Chef Fran um, probably has one too, okay? But uh, the the answer is yes, definitely you can make vegan um, parachute. And then after that, the filling can also easily be made vegan. So the answer is yes and yes. Thank you. All right, a couple more questions here. This is coming from uh, Catherine. I think we answered your question already, but let's say, uh, how do you roll the sponge without cracking or breaking it? So we talked a little yeah. bit about the moisture and the high heat and the overnight wrapping. Is there anything else, Chef, you want to mention about rolling it without cracking or breaking it? No, um, I think we covered it pretty much. Uh, another trick is if your sponge feels a little dry, you can always soak it with a flavored simple syrup. Okay. So uh, you could... Uh, uh, you could put some uh, cinnamon sticks uh, and some whole spices in uh, in the simple syrup, and um, this way you add more flavor. And then what you would do, you would take with a brush. You before you fill it, you you take with a brush and you dab it on. That will definitely make the sponge even moisture and easier to roll. Okay, I'm I'm out of tricks. You know, if you continue, I will have nothing more to say. You know about this. Well, that's always been my standard operating procedure. I make a simple syrup before I even think I'm going to roll a sponge because I've cracked it so many times earlier on. Um, and then I brush it on to make it moisture. And I usually do a Grand Marnier simple syrup. Um, and sure. then do some orange zest infused in the... the you, you put Grand Marnier so if the cake is a failure, people are half drunk and they won't realize it, you know? That's an old trick, you know? Yep. Yep. Okay. Next question is from Jeanette. Uh, where can I find the basic vanilla ice cream recipe? I'm interested in the recipe and the use of the KitchenAid ice cream machine. So there is a link on the top. It's locked. It's from Chef Jackie. That link will take you to our page and the ice cream recipe is there. Um, 
and a second recipe is there. We will add all the recipes from what we've talked about here uh, in the next day so that you have all the recipes from this presentation. But the vanilla ice cream is there to get you started. Excellent. And then the, the KitchenAid uh, ice cream maker is, um, is a, it looks like a, a bowl, um, KitchenAid bowl, but it has, of course, it's double walled and inside there is a liquid. <clears throat> And uh, you have to really, the key is to really keep this bowl in the freezer for 24 hours uh, at least, because uh, otherwise your ice cream is not going to um, harden. And my recommendation is when you, uh, when you put your, that special bowl into the, into the mixer and you put your, uh, uh, liquid your ice cream uh, also that has to be sitting in the refrigerator overnight. Uh, once you put it in there and you start turning, my advice is to just put a loose uh, plastic cover, plastic wrap, garbage bag, something to keep the, the whole environment cold because um, that lid doesn't have a cover. And so Let's say if it's warm, it's, it's 73 degrees in your house and you're trying to make ice cream. That paddle that is mixing is pulling out, pulling warm air in this ice cream. And sometimes this is the reason why this ice cream is not setting. Yeah, when I was uh, my first restaurant, when I was 25, I had um, two or three of those ice cream bases before I had a, a larger machine to make ice cream. And it was key to yep. do it overnight and make sure your creme anglaise or your ice cream base was uh, perfectly cold and then wrapping it to keep the, the chill in. And if it's not perfectly cold and you over churn it, you can actually churn the butter out of the cream and you get these little chunks of butter, which I learned the hard way. That's how you call, you call it butter ice cream, right? Yep. You were the creator of that, right? Yep, I put that on the menu, nice. butter ice cream. Nice. Beautiful. Okay, a couple more questions here, Chef. This is from Kate. How did you make the shaped chocolate to cover the end? Uh, I, I wondered the same thing. How did you make that perfect little shape to cover the end of your uh, log there? Well, this is um, I t uh, in the truffle uh, recipe uh, from the pastry course, we have a small section on how to temper chocolate. And uh, so what you do, you do, um, you take some of that chocolate, that liquid chocolate, and you pour it onto uh, let's say a uh, six inch by six inch uh, parchment paper or wax paper, and you just uh, spread it so it's nice and thin. And then you uh, let it uh, harden a little bit. Uh, the key is to be able to touch the center. So it takes about a minute and a half to two minutes. And as soon as it, it's, uh, it's hard, you take a round cookie cutter, or if you don't have that, you put a glass over it and you just trace it with a knife. Then you put this in the refrigerator, the whole piece of paper with now the, the cut uh, piece, just uh, all of it like this in the refrigerator, let it harden. If you want it to be super flat, just sandwich it between two sheet trays. And once it's hard, then you, uh, you take a knife that you run under very hot water and you just cut the edge that you don't want and so it fits nicely on here. Et voila. That is some detail. Um, and I'm gonna have to ask the question on all the pieces of bark on the outside. I'd assume that you took parchment paper and wrapped it on a long rolling pin and then painted the chocolate on and then broke it into random pieces. No, you would, you would you would think that it's it's not like that, but it's okay. It's a good try. Uh, so the way we do this is uh, imagine this is a piece of parchment paper. Yeah, you are uh, you spread some uh, chocolate on it, like very thin, and then you let it you let it harden. Just again, it takes about two minutes, and then you t put another piece of parchment paper on it. And then you roll it uh, around a rolling pin. Put a piece of tape. And then you put it in a cold place uh, for a couple hours, yeah? And then uh, the next day or whenever, after, once it's hard, you unroll it. And just by unrolling it, you get those round, roundish shards. 
Yeah, that looks great. And it looks like you te you tempered the chocolate perfectly too. I like that sheen. Yeah, you know, I got lucky, you know. Oh no, you're a professional with 45 years of experience. Thank you. <laughs> All right, a couple more questions here. Um, this is for Vo from Vopat. Hello, chef. Um, what do you do to make fruit carpaccio with syrup and chocolate chantilly with only exotic fruits such as mango, uh, kiwi, papaya? Uh, that taste and look amazing. Thank you, chef. So I think it's uh, making a fruit carpaccio with such ripe fruits like mango and kiwi and papaya that might be hard to slice quite thin. I can, can picture I can picture the question, but I think it's uh, that she only has exotic fruits. So. How do you make a carpaccio? Or, or, well, you know, I, the question is, how would you make the fruit carpaccio? And I think it would be, um, I might freeze the fruits and slice them on a slicer. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the only, I, I agree. For once, I agree with you. Uh, 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 you can, uh, hmm. <clears throat> you're definitely going to have to put the fruit, the different fruit, uh, together in some kind of a container, it could be a loaf pan or something, and I really freeze it. And then after that, uh, use a meat slicer or a mandolin yep. uh, to cut some very, very thin slices. And then after that, right away, put it on, uh, on a plate. But uh, since pastry chefs are control freaks, what I would do, I would add... Um, so let's say you have the fruit. Let's just keep it simple. You have fruit and you have, uh, we'll, we'll put, let's say, 15% uh, of sugar com compared to the fruit. So if you have 100 grams of fruit, you add 15 grams of sugar. And then what I would do, I would add a little bit of gelatin or pectin, a very small amount, 1% or 2% of the total weight. And... Uh, what this will do, and then you mix it together and then you press it and you, whatever you mold, <coughs> freeze it, okay? And that little bit of, of pectin or gelatin will keep it from falling apart right after you slice it, you see? That's and then uh, you'll have enough time to put it on a plate and then, um, and then uh, create your fruit carpaccio. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Thank you, chef. <laughs> So we have a question here from Parikh. It's a, uh, do you have any substitute for eggs in a sponge cake recipe? That is a trick question. That's a question for Chef Friend, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it, of course, you, you can, you can uh, make sponge cake with, without eggs, but it's, it takes a, it takes a village, as they say, right? And it takes a village to make it taste really good and, and have the same properties as um as a a, a regular uh, a recipe yeah. uh, uh yesterday we were filming some new recipes and we were making a i think it's a vegan and gluten-free bread uh and um and we we have to put so many ingredients uh a little bit of this a little bit of that just just to mimic the um, the the same reaction gluten or wheat would have, you know. So everything is possible. It just really is a, a, a specialty, specialty on, on its own. And I, I think Chef Friend from the the vegan dessert course would be uh, would be able to uh, to answer this question very well. Okay. Well, we did the best we can on egg substitution. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to enough... make things up, you know, uh, uh, because because uh, it's not really helping. Yeah. All right. A couple of questions from Catherine. With the brioche wreath you demonstrated for the crown, uh, it was rolled flat, but did you cut a hole in the middle like a donut before adding it to the rolls? And I kind of had the same question because when I saw it, it didn't seem like there was any center. So it feels like you made a donut-shaped ring before you put it well, on the rolls. Yeah, you, you make the seven, the seven uh, rolls of brioche or bread, right? And if you want, what you can do, you can, uh, you can uh, place them on a sheet tray to be, uh, to proof, right? To rise. But if you want, you can put a glass or something right here in between. I, that's all I have right now. 
So it actually fits. <laughs> so it, it's preventing the it's preventing the door to uh, move towards the center as it is uh, rising. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you can do that. You know, you can put something in the center and then build. And of course, this glass would have to be greased. You know, just so it comes out nicely, easily. Uh, nothing sticks to it. But that would be a way to um, to make this uh, this crown bread. Okay. Yep. I think it looks like it was cut into a donut. So, uh, uh, Catherine, no, no, <laughs> we're trying to visually understand here, chef. It's okay. All right. Uh, from Catherine, based on the communication we gave on the Bush Noel earlier on chef, Jackie, thank you so much. I think I'll try it again. Priceless information. Thank uh, you. Last question from Diana. Can you go over the filling for the cake? Is the outside just dark chocolate? Also any tips on being successful in the rolling process? Uh, any chance you can demonstrate one uh, with the one he has? Well, in terms of rolling the the sponge, that takes some time. But what about the filling for the cake? I think uh, Swiss uh, buttercream. Anything you want to say about the Swiss it, buttercream? It, it can be it can be uh, can be Swiss buttercream, and you just spread it. Uh, you spread it buttercream or ganache, you know, and then you roll it. It it's um, the key is to not to not put too much filling. Okay. Otherwise, when you try to roll it, you just like swimming and filling. Okay. Uh, uh, and then I have a, another fifty dollar trick uh, for you uh, when it comes to. So what I do usually, I fill it. Okay. I fill my log, my uh, my sponge cake. Now it becomes um, a log, and then I put this in the refrigerator or in the freezer for uh, an hour or so, and now it's it's more sturdy. And you see that the shape of a log is not easy to frost because uh, you have a, a flat spatula uh, that is trying to put um, frosting on a rounded edge. So the, the trick is to put a glove, plastic glove, latex glove, whatever, right? And what you do, you take the frosting in your hand and then you just shape your hand like this and then you go a couple times like this and then uh and you can uh frost one of those you log in no time and that's a trick that i learned in places where we had to make thousands of you logs and we had to figure out a way to to go, yeah. go much much faster you know yeah that's a great trick so to answer your her question that uh, yes there is some uh, ganache frosting on it first uh, and then you put the the log um chocolate pieces on there after yes. that right yes Okay. Well, that concludes the questions for the day. Um, I just want to let everybody know that link on the top will give you a couple of the recipes. We will add the rest of the recipes here. Uh, this is part three of a larger series. We have more coming up um, next week. Uh, we hope you can join us. And thank you, Chef Jackie, for a very enjoyable, informative uh, holiday dessert live event. Enjoy your uh, day. Thank you for having me. And, and I hope uh, our students and our viewers are going to be able to uh, make some fun uh, fun recipes, and hopefully we can even see some of the results. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.